Royden Bergeson walking the track, everything getting set up there at uh, Hawara where Bev and Sweeney is hosting us for Rich Hill Stud Taranaki Breeders Day. And I said, first thing, uh, Sweens is everyone there must be pretty happy in some respects that the weather hasn't adversely affected the race day ahead. Yeah, absolutely, Jase. Against uh, the forecast, apart from a little bit of rain on Thursday night, they have had absolutely no rain. So the track probably appreciated that rain on Thursday night and has just come up beautifully at that dead five. And gee, these fields are deep across the program here. Very good running of the Rich Hill uh, this afternoon. The Cup. Look, I do like Nymph Monte in the feature staying event there this afternoon with the track conditions playing as they are. Going to be a really good day. They put on a wonderful show here in the Taranaki at this uh, meeting in particular. It is their big day on uh, a Saturday and they have track conditions and fields that should see them have a wonderful day. Yeah, excellent betting card, isn't it? Uh, as you say, deep fields, so an opportunity to shop for the horses that you like and as the market moves, either move against the market, take those prices, you can trade out, there's the cash out option. Anyway, let's start our preview with race number two, uh, where now we've got $7.50 for Big Ben. Kahu Rock is at $9. Uh, you've got Blanco Bells at $23 and $5 and at 50 cents. Look, the money has come here for six Lord Turbo. It's 26 into 14. Ripcord is 19 into 15. Horse number eight. So that uh, $15 you can see there. And uh, if we can uh, scroll up and have a look at uh, the uh, favourite price for Not Santa, which is $4. Beckity Boo. In commission 750. Here's the formpro.co.nz form pro rating speed map where there looks to be a little bit of speed drawn uh, beyond uh, mid barriers here, Bevan. It was an interesting speed map for mine, Jason. I wrote down not sure is exactly where they were going to end up. What I did come down to is that Not Santa has enough if those horses come across to find a very good position in the run. And as a very, very talented horse, has had those couple of trials and they've been improving trials. So the last one was very, very good. So I expect Not Santa to run a race here this afternoon, but this is a very deep race, a very, very deep race. Not Santa has found its mark for mine. Look, Ripcord is clearly the interesting horse uh, in this race. There's been money in other markets for Ripcord, New Zealand Cup-wise. Rosie Myers rides for Kevin Myers and comes back out of Australia and I went back and watched that troll last evening and it was a very good effort in behind Miss Shunan, never really asked to quicken up. So the 16 over the 8 and then it was very difficult for mine. Uh, I was willing to forgive Wafer the last start performance at Awa Ar Puni after going down to Rickerton but she can let you down. Prior to that she was in good form. I'm going to forgive her that one. She's got enough ability to be very very competitive in a race like this and the effort of Big Ben last start was very good up north at Tarapa weight off the back so it carries the same impost and he'll put himself in the race big strong horse so he can keep on rolling and on occasions here at Hawara those inside spots can be pretty dominant uh, I've left out some pretty smart sort of horses I thought Kahu Rock was going to be the speed in the race Wasaki uh, Wellington Cup bound look for him just to be running on Becky Debu had no luck last time deep race but I've, I've gone with the favourite here and not centre just on the draw and that speed out wide I think it should be able to get a one off position and be very tough to handle even though uh, race th uh, three sees a couple of horses come out, it's an interesting Mark Frost electrical rating 72 over the 1,200 metres. Right at the top, you've got Lincoln Raider at $2.90, Tavi Mac 320, Tell You What at 440, Darcy Palmer at 9, Platinum Volos, Coventina Bay, and Petrichor have come out of this race. And the best back runner is uh, for Tavi Mac, 340, just trimmed up to $3.20, so uh, taking into account. Uh, the scratching, so it's just short, uh, just shortened a fraction. How about the speed? Now this is the map for race number three. Darcy Palmer and what a smasher! Look like they might be the pace in the race. How did you sort through this event here, Sweens? Uh, Lincoln Raider and and Tavi Mac. The, that's where the market's going. How about yourself? Well, I think Darcy Palmer goes back, actually, Jason, on what I saw last time. They've tried to get this horse to settle, so I don't think Darcy Palmer's going to be anywhere near there. So what a smasher does get it very, very soft here. Look, with the scratchings, uh, Platinum Volos and those uh, two other major ones and the 10 Coventina Bay and the 12 Petractor, I think the speed comes out of this race. And I think that really suits a horse like uh, Tell You What. 
uh, who should get that uh, nice bit of cover and has that one quick short uh, turn of foot. And I did listen to Alan on the radio this morning and he did prefer tell you what over TV Mac. Look, with those scratchings, I was left with the Lincoln Raider on top. Now, he's not a 1,200 metre horse in any sort of uh, imagination, but in this sort of race, on what the trial showed us, he's come back a serious horse's preparation and he was very good last time in. I ended up with him on top, but I'd be playing, tell you what, at the price. I think that's the price to be looking at in a race like this. Lincoln Raider is certainly in the mix for mine. Outside of that, I've got a fair bit of time for Mel D. I think these overs there at $12. It was actually a very good return to the races, and its progression through that first preparation was really, really good. So I think this horse profiles to keep on improving. And Tavi Mac, well, he'll get a, a, a bit of cover, and he's only a little horse who can really finish off strong. He's got good, strong attitude. Maybe these track conditions are a, a suggestion that they might play against him, but... He's all attitude, so it'd be no surprise to see him putting his hand up again. But look, Lincoln Raiders on top, but I think tell you what might be the play in this particular race. The South Taranaki Club Egmont Cup is race five, and Nymph Monty is three dollars and seventy cents. Uh, for those that were considering backing this horse earlier on in the week, have waited to see track conditions. I'm sure you'd be pretty happy with what presents. Red Sierra has shortened from 13 into 11. Aidan Rodney was very keen on this earlier in the week, but uh, he did weigh, uh, he did sort of uh, give the proviso that he wanted to see a little bit of rain for her. Charlie Horse is 9.50 into $8. How will this race be run? Uh, this is how the speed map shapes up for it. Uh, the poor man's Abel looks the leader, and then you've got a whole lot of horses here, Sweens, that have shown some tactical speed in the past, it just depends on intent and where they are in their prep, I guess, as to where they want uh, their horses to be ridden connections. Yeah, well, I think Italian Love is one of those that's more than likely going to push forward. I really hope that they push forward within a twinkling. This is a horse who I think just almost needs to be ridden badly. Uh, because on a couple of occasions, most notably the, uh, at Ellerslie through the last preparation, when pushed forward, three wide working, and just kept on rolling to the line. And I think there'll be sharp improvement out of this horse. I don't think it's the sort of horse that likes to be in amongst runners. The profile's to improve. Look, if they push forward and set out side speed, I don't think this horse will throw it away at this point in its preparation, uh, third up. The visor blinkers go on, so it's got uh, good form recommend for me, the three. I think Nymph Monte is the one. Look, I was very keen at $10 at Hastings last time, and they went no gallop early, and that helps him, but also hurts him, because he has to do some pretty special things late in a race, and he has to settle back and just get in his uh, rhythm. But he can really sprint, as he showed here last season, and he put them away by an absolute margin. He just suits my eye, this horse, fourth up this preparation. I really think he's one of the better if not uh, in the top echelon of our stars in this country when he's right. And I think he has shown this preparation, he's coming up as well as ever. So for me, he's the best bet on the programme. Over the three and a twinkling, I think that's got good form recommend. Haim Nikita was amazing last time. Look, you don't often see a horse win three wide the trip, but it was in a nice rhythm and there was no speed in the race, so it probably wasn't the worst place to be, but you don't see it very often. And a very progressive type of horse, the 10. And I'm thinking that Sylvester will run a race today. I saw him at Oteki having a track gallop. He was bursting out of his skin, this horse, and he's always forgotten in the markets, but he's a lot better than he has uh, sort of been priced up at. He's getting two kilos off his back, and it'd be no surprise to me if he was to run a hell of a race today as well. But I've always had a big opinion of Nip. Monte's let me down on more than one occasion, but he just seems to be in the right vein of form, right place in his preparation, at the right racetrack, so I thought his price was something that we could look at as a serious bet on the programme. And now that the conditions present like they are, it's certainly a, a significantly different scenario than the rain had come and it's a slow to heavy track, so yeah, you'd be upgrading Nymph Monty uh, compared to sort of how you did your form if you were expecting more rain, and, and maybe Sylvester probably isn't quite as... Uh, good a chance uh, given that but yes uh, a good bet for Bevan Sweeney there Nymph Monty in the South Taranaki Club Egmont Cup thought it was a really nice race to follow that race number six on the program where we've got tight line it's out to $4.60 now the reason why this is is because there's been good support for uh, Guyada is at $6 and Mars Bars in particular is shortened into single figures. Uh, Bowden there you can see at six, but uh, if we look at the bottom of this market, you'll see the price for Mars Bars 580 
in early betting on the totalizator, but with bookmakers, along with Guillardas, being now one of the better back runners in the race. Hmm. Uh, Tightline, I thought, was uh, an excellent betting proposition, but uh, the market not so keen on it. Uh, we've got some speed there from Don't Blame the Music, also Bowden you'd expect to go for it. I'm not sure that Ballum Fresh Up will be able to sit quite as handy as that. Uh, then you've got Sugar Rush that might go forward. Uh, how did you sort through race number six here, Sweens? I thought there was a tyrant of speed really, uh, and probably more than that speed map does show. I had a host trying to find a uh, spot forward in this uh, particular race, so I think it really does help out a horse like Tightline. A horse like uh, Guada, who was so good at Taupo, seems to have come back really, really nicely. Um, and then it'll have to help Monrakeur, Platinum and Vader, who are pretty smart in their own rights. I thought Tightline was one of the runs of the day at, at, uh, at uh, Hastings, uh, behind Hartley. It was an immense performance after what happened at the start and getting back in the field. And that section he was very, very good. I, I thought about it as my best bet, Jase, but you put it up on the first call. So we'll just leave that to you. Craig Grills uh, for Stephen Marsh. And pretty progressive type of horse. Big, strong animal now, six-year-old by a line. So I gave it a lot of uh, respect here. I expect Mon Recure to run a race here this afternoon. A horse that's been more capable or well capable in black type uh, racing through its preparations and look it'll be ready to go today for Fraser or Rhett. Irish Flame was in my original selections maybe with its dead five conditions it sort of slips down a couple of uh, rungs in the ladder but it's got good ability uh, Irish Flame and wouldn't be surprised Jase if Platinum Invader run some sort of race on the troll. Uh, this is a horse who of course we saw over ground last preparation but wouldn't be any surprise to me if he runs a race over 1,400 metres fresh up with a uh, couple of trolls in his legs. So I'm going to stick with Tightline as my top selection, but again, another very deep race. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, the feature is a Group 3 level, sponsored by Rich Hill Stud, and it's the Taranaki Breeders' Stakes, where Nicoletta is at 7. That's just drifted. Darscape Princess is $5.50. Now, there has been some specking for 7 to Toto Pearl, that's now $14, opening price of 18 Queen of Diamonds, though, uh, the main mover, $3.15 to $3.10. Murray Baker, when we spoke to, with him earlier, suggesting that's uh, the best stable chance for the weekend and therefore the better of uh, the two chances, even though Nicoletta is defending the crown that she won last year. Secret Lure there at $8.50. And could live in on a prayer, be a smoky third up, a lot better, more improved, and the better track conditions there than expected, uh, a positive for living on a prayer at $16. Here's the speed, uh, brought to you by Form Pro Ratings. Miss Lizzie and Nicoletta, you'd think, would compete early. Miss Contessa Darscape, Princess Lady Cartel, our speed. Look, swings up. Miss Lizzie on a, on a sort of a more rain-affected track, you'd be confident they'd really push the button, but sort of a slightly different scenario with the, the better track presenting, isn't it? Uh, they'll push the button. Uh, I've been spoken, I've spoken to Brian a couple of times on Miss Lizzie and it was a, a little bit of a throw at the stumps with her with the rain that was forecast to hit uh, this part of the world through sort of the beginning of the week. You look at the forecast and thought, well, they're going to have a rain-affected track. So they thought, well, she can handle those rain-affected tracks better than most, so we'll give her a go. Now, the better track conditions, I don't think they can really change pattern with her. They'll push forward and put her right in the race. And I had her crossing Nicoletta, so she'll get an absolute perfect run in the race. Queen of Diamonds with the blinkers on, you'd expect they'll roll forward and she might just get a beautiful sit outside speed. And when we saw her do that sort of thing last season, gee, she was devastating. And I thought her trial suggested that she is not very far away uh, from that form. I am going to go with last year's winner, Nicoletta. I think she is probably in the right position to be winning again. Uh, her trials have suggested she's coming up OK. I thought her price just offered you a little bit more than I expected. Over Queen of Diamonds, I think the Baker Forsman team uh, have a stranglehold on this uh, particular race. Uh, Miss Lizzie should be Queen of Diamonds, clearly there. Jessie G, I thought her run at Hastings suggested she's coming up, and I've spoken to Mike on a couple of occasions, and he has suggested to me that he thinks this is the pr preparation for Jessie G, and she's coming up really, really nicely. Look, Darsgate Princess is probably one short here today, but now the track has come up a dead five, that changes everything around her because she is a firm track horse 
who's got a beautiful action on her. I spoke to Fraser through the week and he just said, I, I, I don't feel as though she came up last preparation at all. Because she did put in one great run up uh, in the north, but there was just nothing post that. Mears can do that. He feels as though she's coming up very nicely this season. And she's a group one horse at best, so she might be one short here today, but I think uh, Darsgate Princess is one to follow as we get into those miles at Trenton that are upcoming in the next few months. OK, Sweens, as we do, we give you $100 to spend uh, every week that you're on the Pundit's Lounge Live. How have you distributed that uh, across various runners today? Well, well I'm going to go with Nymph Monte. Uh, I think that's my personal, what is my personal best bet on the programme. So we'll be putting 50 to win on Nymph Monte at around about 3.8. Uh, I quite like the chances in race four of Ivana Rama. I just think this horse uh, post its win at Otaki last season. Things just went a little bit wrong, and I really thought this horse has come back nicely watching its last to start fresh up run last time. And it does have really good ability, this horse, Ivana Rama, in race number four. And then blowout, Platinum Invader. I just couldn't believe the price around a horse who's got his sort of ability. So uh, we'll have 50 on Nip, we'll have 30 on Ivana Rama, and we'll throw a little 20 at Platinum Invader. Love seeing these good horses come back to the races, and I know he's going to be better over further, but I think he will sprint quite nicely fresh, Platinum Invader, now that these track conditions have uh, come up at that dead five. I think they were waiting and waiting uh, on him around track conditions. Now it's dead five, he's here. And, He's got all the ability to win a race like that, even short of his best. So uh, they are the bets, the $100 spend. But I think Niv Monte, dead five, placed in his preparation, Jace. I'll be very surprised if he's not right in the mix in the cup this afternoon.